Hello there, everyone. Welcome back to some more Let's Play Under Rail. In the last episode, I had agonized over what to put our points in since we leveled to level 20. And we got to level 20 because we eliminated entire Iron Head base. And we also killed the Envoy uh, for the Free Drones. In fact, we're going to go and find the Free Drones person and talk to her now. First, though, we need to level. No one has seems to care what I take, if I take tailoring or if we take chemistry and electronics. So we will stick with the original plan. It's It's been tough for me to make this decision, but the original plan, we can definitely be making all these different types of elemental bolts. We have points in it. We saw how effective that is. If the expansion comes out and we're still playing it, I'll be able to worm in extra points to take tailoring if I desire to do even more crafting. So let's go ahead and grab a point in intelligence for our crafting needs. And over here, let's go ahead and do the level like I originally intended. We're gonna dump 20 points into mechanics, bringing it right up to match all those other skills I have been leveling since the beginning of the game. We'll put five more points in stealth. And now 15 points will be put into electronics. This will actually give us a slight amount of hacking. Barely anything, but it will be something. And we will accept this. This is not enough yet to do anything with electronics. Next level, though, we'll hopefully be able to do that. Oops, we have, we have feats as well. So, this is going to be interesting. <laughs> we already made a crossbow. A pretty incredible crossbow. We can make an even better one if we take Boyer. This would give us our crossbows, as you can see, an extra 35% critical damage bonus, which is amazing. We will want this, but I don't think we need it quite yet. I'm thinking... Well, there's actually quite a few things we can take that are very useful to us. Weaponsmith could be very good, but we'll need some, a really decent, we'll need good metal in order to make a, cro a dagger, which is equal to the current dagger we are using. It's actually interesting getting such a great dagger as the, one, as the normal one we are currently using. Oh, or we could skip those feats until later and grab something like Concussive Shots. It gives a chance to slow down enemies. That could also be useful, too. But I... I think we will take... I think, Tim, you should take Weaponsmith. Am I gonna actually make a dagger anytime soon? Because if I'm not, if I'm gonna wait until we actually have the benches, this is useless for me at the moment, because I'm gonna wait. Our, da our current dagger is actually really good. Why don't you take Boyer and you can make another crossbow? Am I sure about that, Tim? You can also take Aim Shot, which would be nice to get automatic critical hits with our crossbows, assuming it actually struck the enemy. That could be really useful, too. So, uh, all this stuff is really useful. We could either take. Basically, <laughs> if I want Boyer and Weaponsmith, we have enough to take one last feat. If I'm going to take that feat now, I better make sure I'm going to be happy with that choice. Why don't, Tim, you stick with Weaponsmith? You're going to eventually make a dagger anyway, and you'll be glad to have it. Let's take it. Done. Okay. Um, Alright, so with all that done, our leveling is now complete. Let's see where we're going to turn in that one quest. Report to the mysterious lady near Junkyard's south entrance. Okay, so we're heading to Junkyard. Is there anything else that we wanted to do? I don't think... I don't think at the time we were gone that they recycled their inventory. No, I see 206 bucks there, so that's, that's a definite no. Which means that they're not going to have a better crossbow part. We could go and check on the one vendor... This vendor here. He occasionally sells crossbow parts. I think he sells tabby boots as well. One of the few merchants who does so. Yeah, why don't we go and do that, Tim? Go and visit that uh, that person. We'll have to sneak past some side beetles. It's been a long time since we've actually seen side beetles, hasn't it? We've been doing many things around in Foundry for a while. Actually, no, Tim, the first thing you should do is go to Junkyard. 
So we can get there from the docks. We haven't been to the docks at Core City yet, so I guess we'll do some exploring down here first. Hello, commoner. Nah, I've been here pretty often, actually. First time in the docks area. While we're here, we're absolutely going to go ahead and pickpocket everybody. Because we can get Junkyard Surprise. Actually, we can get five Charons, and we can get Junkyard Surprise. We're going to Junkyard anyway. We can only afford to visit the arena once a week. I need more Charons. Yes. Yes, you do. <laughs> Locked! It's not red, though. No one's going to mind if we do this. A medical locker. Oh, my voice sounded a little robotic to myself right there. Some shelves. Nice. Two EMPs and a fancy lighter. Get some more bullets. And you do the drill, everyone. We go ahead and pickpocket every single person we come across. A normal grenade, the challenge what we'll take. I ain't yet sure if I like this place or not. This place is massive. Yeah, it is. Cities tend to be. I'm not a city person myself. I prefer the suburbs or country. Cities that just have so many people in them. And I'm not a I'm not a people person. <laughs> I'm, I'm super introverted in... Well, actually, you wouldn't even know that in real life. Because uh, I'm very talkative as well. I just have all... I prepare myself to talk to to talk to talk people for some time in person. And then when I'm finally all done, it feels really nice to get home and away from everybody. Not that I dislike people. I love people. But uh, I need to recharge after talking to people for a while. So uh, what are we grabbing here with this person, Tim? Let's grab some morphine. And we'll also grab this person's uh, plasma cell because we can't take the Charons now. Where I'm from, we call this place Gore City. You know, because the arena and stuff. You dig? Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. It also makes sense. I'm taking money from people. Hello, commoner. Hello, Mr. Snipers. Avoid drop zone. Will do. Will do. He's got a single burrow throwing knife. We can take his Charons from him, and we'll do that. Master Exploder! Master Exploder! It must be one of the arena contestants. They have names as if they're like professional wrestlers and stuff like that when you get when you climb the ranks high enough. We'll take his Charons and the dagger he has. That dagger is fully repaired. That dagger is probably gonna get me about, I would say, 58 at least pieces. 72. Amazing. Fabric scraps. Oh, looks like the Protectorate have a system here. Move along, citizen. This is a restricted area. Remember that the Protectorate are from Northern Underrail. I don't think they own this, this city. Ooh, an advanced electronic repair kit. We're taking that. And we'll take Lloyd's 24 bucks. Superintendent Rubin. The man addresses you with an irritated voice. What do you want? Never mind. Sorry, sir. But I want to search your pockets for interesting things. He's got a key. He found this key in Super Doc Utilities Room key. We're totally taking that. We can break that down for more parts as well. I think we'll take his money. And that will do. Low quality black cloth and uh, what should we call it? Oh, I don't remember the buoys moving before. Interesting. I wonder if that was also added in preparation for the DLC, which will have a lot of water areas. This is Captain Rasto. We are here to see him because he can take us to other docks. He's also got some eel sandwiches on him. Or money, but I'm going to be able to take one of them. We'll take his lunch. Hey, Captain. 
The rugged ferryman greets you with a long, thoughtful stare. After a brief moment of inspection, he points his finger at you and speaks. Ain't you that dude who punched his wife in the face on my boat a couple months ago? Oh, uh, no, my bad. That dude did look a lot like you, though. Anyway, I'm Rastko. You need a ride? Yeah, I need to get to Junkyard. Sure, I can get you there, but it'll cost you 25 charons. Let's go. Junkyard it is. Let's go. Been a long time since we've showed up in Junkyard. Holy crap. Junkyard, unfortunately, to my knowledge, does not get any better equipment in it. It's always, it has every, um, basically it's tier one low level gear you can pick up from this place. That said, we're probably a match for the entire gangs at this point. We could probably beat up everybody if we wanted to. The only person who might have interesting things for us would be Fixer. Our stealth is also higher, though. We might be able to get into a place or two we weren't able to before. While we're here, we may as well visit the merchants. We're not going to be here very often, so let's see what they're willing to buy today. Uh, oh, we still need advanced patching kits. Those, those could always be useful. Ho, oh, oh, ho. Look at the low-level armor he's got. Yeah, all lower level. He is selling burrow poison traps. He's buying a handful of things. Maybe... Does he have acid bolts? He has acid bolts. We need those. Uh, actually, first, let's go and see if we have anything to sell. I think I left things in the dumpster. We did. Oh! But all of this stuff, I wanted to actually scrap. This is why I left all of this low, low level stuff here. While we're here, let's go ahead and vendor him two of these melee weapons, though. Which two are the best type? That one. None of them are really that... None, none of these weapons will be worth very much. And can we take your acid bolts for them? Not quite. We'll have to pay seven bucks. I'm fine with that. All the rest of these can be recycled. All of them. Let's just make sure that I'm actually recycling things I want to recycle. And this is why I kept all of these old daggers for their little bit of scrap. Yep, I'm that much of a miser in video games <laughs> that uh, I consider this a, a worthwhile endeavor to do. It probably isn't. You probably don't need to, to be so meticulous as I am. But uh, I want every penny. And look at that. We had 250 of them practically. And that brings our repair kits back up to 18. Amazing. Joint is buying five batteries, four metal components, five padding. He's not he's not really selling anything I'm interested in either. I think the gentleman right in there, whose name I forget, uh, will buy oh, the occasional weapon from us. He might be buying boots, he might not be. Let's try this stuff. This is actually just all junk, all of this. I guess we'll... Let's take all of this with us. Whatever we can't sell, we're just going to end up vendoring it then. Oh, that's some decent quality uh, padding. 72? I mean, it's mid-level stuff. I think one of these people were, was willing to buy it. This guy was. Take 25 charons for that. Hello, Len. Thought your name was Larry. Let's go. So you're willing to buy three melee weapons. We'll vendor this to you. And that, and that's, uh... So you know what, everyone? I'm probably not going to ever use the balaclava again. I'll be sticking with our headset from now on. Uh, at least that's the plan at the moment. And, and or we'll buy a better one than this one. We're going to vendor this. As long as, we, as long as we found someone who's willing to buy it. 20 for all that work. That's worth it. Oh, that's interesting. I like that minus percent crit. Unfortunately, I have to give up two utility slots, which I'm not willing to do. 
Okay. Um, uh, where are we going, Tim? Oh, we gotta go outside. We have to go outside. Do you have anything else you want to vendor? Let's go up this way first and visit the uh, electronics merchant in Junkyard. Thank you again. I forget your name, but for telling me about this gentleman. I never saw him in my hundreds of hours of playing this game before. I never visited this shop whatsoever because I never saw that door. I'd probably kill Vince and all his thugs by now if I wanted a bunch of low level equipment. How you doing? Back for some shopping? Okay, yeah, I am indeed. And you are buying only the laser weapon. But you will pay a fair price for that. I am content. Do I want to buy any cells? No, I think we're good. And her batteries will be yeah, all low level. Is she selling anything else interesting? No. My energies... My energies. My electronics will not be high enough to build a decent laser weapon. Or plaza weapon. Uh, while we're here, we'll visit Fixer. He's, uh, he will buy this at least from us, and we should try to trade away... Let's see, what's he selling? Six medicines. We'll trade him five of these. And is he selling anything interesting today? No new drugs. Nothing that we don't already have. I've been looking for more something like Aegis, but he's not selling anything like that. We're fine on Adrenaline. We could arguably use another Morphine. We're fine on ant on Poison Cure. He is selling Molotov Cocktails. We don't really have a lot of them. In fact, we don't have any on us. Why don't we go ahead and uh, take a handful of these? Can we take two? Yes, we can. And the rest, we'll take in cash. If we want to make Molotovs, we'll be able to do that with chemistry, but you need a tiny, tiny little bit of tailoring to do so. Another reason why I'm tempted to take tailoring when the DLC comes out. Yeah, we just increase all of our normal stats. Five more levels. That would be 25 times 4. That's 100. That would let us put 100 points into tailoring. Since there's going to be 200 points in total, I think. Oh, oh, we don't need to go that way. We don't have anything to vendor to that gentleman, I think. Let's put all this low-level crap here. It's the repair kits Tim, that are weighing you down at the moment. We'll hold on to them. All right. I believe that we were supposed to meet this, uh, the girl again, outside the south entrance. That'll be down this way. I don't see her actually outside. Oh, there she is. Hello, miss. I think we picked her pocket before. We'll try again. Hey, it's the new girl, actually. She has different stuff on her. We'll take her coins and the lockpick. Hello. You did it, Garrett. You did it. Thank you. Thank you. I love you all. <laughs> well done. Well done. You've proven to us that you are willing and worthy of becoming a part of our family. We don't have riches, we don't have power, and we have to live in constant danger. But we have humanity. We have honesty. And we have the will to send the evil protectorate into oblivion. And we will do it together. Let's let her continue. Now it's time to meet the rest of the family. I want you to go to the free drone's base in the underpassages. The simplest way to explain how to get there is to find the underpassages entrance just south of rail crossing. Then go west and you'll come to a locked door with an intercom next to it. Use the intercom. The password is delectable. Got it. Delectable. Great. Just be careful, the underpasses are full of lurkers. I gotta move. Do you have any questions before we depart? I never learned your name. It's... Sarah. Sarah Aline. 
Nice to meet you. She smiles. Uh, what are these underpassages? Underpassages are a connected set of passages just below the metro level. They connect several major locations across Lower Underrail, like Core City, Rail Crossing, GMS, and such. Those passages used to be a very, very convenient way of getting around, but then the lurkers thought it'd make a nice slaughterhouse. Now only the most desperate go through there, and us, which is the same, in a way. You mentioned lurkers. What can you tell me about them? Lurkers. Oh, they're horrible creatures. Well, they are our neighbors in the underpassages, a gang of demented killers who will cut up anyone who even dares breathe in their presence. The only good thing is that everyone knows they dwell in the passages, which makes it a good hiding place from the protectorate. Of course, living that close to Lurker Central is not safe at all. It usually feels like a stalactite is hanging over your head. But nothing is perfect in life. Alright, I have no further questions. In that case, good luck, brother. I lead you there, but I have some important business here. Goodbye, and stay free. Stay free. Alright, we're part of the resistance. Did we gain any experience points for that? Yeah! We gained 2,500 for it. Very nice. Okay, well, I guess we're gonna go there, then. Or, alternatively, we can look for those tabby boots. We actually could go to... No. No, 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 no. You were at Rail Crossing before... Core City, and you bought everything they had. So, if we want to get to the underpassages, I suppose it's the quickest way. There is no real quickest way. It's going to cost 50 charons to make the trip. Let's do it. Let's go to Southgate Station first. And from here, from here we will go and visit our room really quick and drop off a few of these repair kits. Alright, so do our private quarters. The first game I ever played that had player housing in it, like some place for you to hang your hat and customize was a game called Auto Assault. It was a, a... Well, when I picked it up, I thought it was going to be some multiplayer demolition derby, type of weird FPS behind your back type of thing. What I actually got was a MMO. And an amazing one at that, with a really unique combat system. And the crafting in that game was incredible. Holy crap, was it ever amazing. Unfortunately, the game did not do so well. Um, not, it did not attract a large enough attention, and this was before games were free to play. So they shuttered their doors, and that was the end of Auto Assault. Such a shame. I still love that game. Oh, what are you doing here, Tim? We are storing a few things. We don't need six mines with us. We probably don't need 18 with the best repair kits or these 17 normal ones. We can keep six and ten on us. Actually, let's take maybe two more advanced. These are also worth quite a bit of cash if you actually want to just vendor them instead of bringing around guns or what have you. There's a few merchants who will just buy them. Like, buy as many of them as you got. So it's another good reason for you, viewer, if you're playing this game, to go ahead and convert everything that's not worth money into parts. And then make those into repair kits. All of them. Okay, so, I guess we will go back to Rail Crossing. While we're here, we may as well visit the vendor, just in case. Actually, just in case they have things to sell. We left a few, a handful of things on these people as well. We can now hold the hammer. Hold that as well. We can hold all this stuff. Can't carry anything here. Uh, we can carry the gun, actually. Alright, let's drop this stuff off at Rail Crossing. Oh, that gun might be worth something, Tim, if we repair it a little more, too. Oh, well, it's worth something right now. <laughs> what you mean to say is it might be worth a little more than a little.
Okay, why don't let's let's repair it. So use one of these. Oh, I apparently took the the riot set as well. We can totally repair that. Oh, we can't repair that? What does it take? Does it actually take a fabric kit? It does! That's interesting. Let's repair it once. Ooh, that would be... That's nice. Let's repair it again. Yeah, that's worth it. Now, I don't think they recycled their stuff yet. But we'll check really quick. Travis. He has no money on him, so no. They have not yet recycled. All that stuff waits here, and we're good to go. Okay. Next stop, let's visit the free drones. It'll be my first time there. I'm actually curious as to what they'll even sell. Oh, that was a thing I meant to talk about. So, when I was playing this game originally, my... Or, originally. The first character that managed to get pretty far in the game... Actually, the, the character of mine who managed to reach the Deep Caverns. He took a tiny bit of Mercantile, I think is what it's called, as a skill as well. And there are vendors who will only sell you... Who will sell you special... Who will give you access to look at different types of equipment in their inventory if you have a minimum threshold of Mercantile. Mercantile is a talking skill. There it is, right there. And the stuff you can get is very nice. Stuff you would not normally ever get to see. Some high quality tabby boots, for example. Maybe some better crossbow parts. It's pretty amazing what you can get with it. All of this, the things, the skills you can take in this game seem to be really worth using. I wish I could say that for the feats. There's a few feats which are totally never worth taking. Unless you want quality of life stuff. We took Burglar, for example. Burglar is totally not worth it. Not for the, uh, because all it really does for you... Well, I guess it could be considered worth it. It does, it decreases your lockpicking time by 75%. So instead of taking as long as it would normally take to pick someone's pocket, it's substantially... I thought it was uh, that far. Where's our, where's our burglar? There you go. That plus 10 bonus to stealth skill, that's that's useless. Absolutely 100% useless. If we had hacking, it would make it a little better for us too, because we, we would benefit from that skill on hacking and pick, um, pick locks. But we don't have that. I think Tim, you want to... Oh, we didn't explore this zone? That's right down here. But that doesn't lead you to where you want to go. You want to go to the lower under rail. That's going to be based off of that, I think. No. No, it's not. It's not that entrance. But it, hold on, everyone. I'm confused. What entrance is this to get down to lower under rail? Oh... It's near Southgate Station. So I went to Rail Crossing. I didn't even have to do that. Okay. Um, next closest place would probably be Core City. I guess we're walking to Core City then. It's been a while since we explored this place anyway. We'll visit the Free, free, uh, free Mutants. I'm about to say Free Mutants. <laughs> This isn't Armageddon Empires. There are no free mutants in this game, Tim. Some sort of locked gate there. Ah, uh, yes, I remember they amb ambushing the uh, Iron Heads? Or were they Lurkers? Lurkers who were in that area. Warming themselves by the fire. Poor chaps. Who they know that their extinction was nigh. Hello, Rat Hound. Please do not bother me. Hello, Rat Hound. Please do not bother me. Please do not bother me. Oh, I began to talk about useless feats. Um, there's a feat called Ninja Looter. I can't think of a worse feat in the game than that. It reduces your pickpocketing time by 
and decreases the suspicion level of the enemy if you can do it while you're stealthed and the enemy must also be completely unaware of you so they can't have the red eyeball above them above their head it seems like that is impossible to do given how difficult it is to actually walk up right behind someone completely stealth you'd probably have to use a cloaking device to do it have incredibly high amounts of stealth and even then you're probably not even going to succeed because walking right next to someone you got maybe like three seconds so by the time you open up their inventory you better hope that you can just hit a to grab everything or the fighting starts anyway because some some people that you meet they uh their detection level their suspicion level is really high naturally so i, I don't know and there's several other feats that i'm like oh, i don't know quality of life changes i suppose um we want the really lower section i think that was was that this way I think it was this way. It's been so long, Tim, since you actually walked around this place. Ah, no. This is the drop zone. We'll explore Core City maybe in the next episode. We'll begin taking a peek and see what's around this place. But not this one. Right, I came from this way instead. And, Tim, you're going to need to be careful. There was a mugger down here before who did not attack you. Oh! You didn't even take this way, apparently, Tim. This is going to be really bad for you. Oh, right, there's the guy who we let out. You couldn't figure out how to open the door or anything of the sort. And we're back in lurker territory. Been a while since I heard this music, and since we went adventuring down here in the dark. That was really nerve-wracking, especially finding their base and having to kill, like, 20 of them. Remember that you can still get random encounters down here, so it's always in your best interest, if you have stealth, to remain stealthed. Him if you pay attention to where you're walking as well. Now that we've taken Weaponsmith, I will be making the occasional swing over to Foundry to look at the metal plates they have for sale there. We'll probably want to build a better dagger soon. Which will be tough. Our dagger is really phenomenal. A male voice is heard over the intercom. Oh, I just ate a mushroom cake that took quite some time to make. Boy, I ate it fast and I had a blast because it was delectable. Correct? Go right in. The dog cautiously approaches you, displaying neither signs of aggression nor submission. It positions itself a short distance from you while maintaining a clinical stare. Perfectly calm and focused, it waits for you to make the first move. Who's a good doggy? Are you? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Come here. The dog observes you for several seconds before taking a few steps forward, each step more confident than the last. Its eyes are still fixed on you, however the feeling of, of a threat is now greatly diminished. In fact, you get the impression that it was never really present, and that it was simply a misinterpretation on your part. And as a subtle wag of the dog's tail reinforces your thoughts, all your worries disappear. Suddenly you hear a male voice in the distance. Laser, come here boy! Oh, a psychic dog! Wow, it was reading our minds I guess. Hello, Jaina. We must all stick together. Indeed, we must. First, do the free drones have any, like, secret stuff on them that they're hiding from each other? 
or from me? Anarchist symbol. A well-known circle A symbol, which represents anarchism. It's worth quite a bit of, of points. Well, we're not playing Oddity, but we'll take this from her anyway. Sup, Garrett. I'm really glad you made it in one piece. I'm Hutch, and I see you've already met my first best friend, Laser. He just wanted to greet you and make sure you're not a lurker. We wouldn't want one of them sneaking in here now, would we? What can you tell me about them? Low-life trash who reside in the underpassages and kill people. I don't see anything else in what they do but senseless killing. Derailed bastards. They disgust me. If there's anything else I hate more than cans, it's those beasts. Who came up with the Mushroom Cake song? I was Sarah, the girl who contacted you about joining us. Ah, I used to sing I used to bring her mushroom cakes constantly bugging darling to make them so that I can give them to Sarah so as a little joke, we use it as a door pass. Delectable used to be delicious, but since we were worried it was a bit too easy to figure out, well, we changed it. It still seems unsafe to me. No one got through yet. I mean, no one wanted. Lurkers are way too dumb anyway, and they can't have no idea we're even here. They're morons. <laughs> oh, what can you tell me about laser? Laser is an artificially engineered canine assassin, designed and manufactured by Biocorp in their canine plant in Deep Caverns. Built to fight with super canine speed, reflexes, and intelligence unmatched by any other living dog. He is undeniably the greatest, the best, the... Uh, I've lost the inspiration. <laughs> um, <laughs> Laser is my dog. He's made of flesh, don't worry. I brought him here when he was just a puppy, about a year and a half ago. Found him sleeping in some trash, all skinny and dirty, full of fleas. He's a very smart pooch, but he's... A stupidly fast one, hence his name. I just love him. He truly is a man's best friend. My best friend. So, what am I about to walk into? Uh, I can start with the basic layout inhabitants. As soon as you get through the passage behind us, you'll run straight into Beckett, our supplier. You'll get a lot of good stuff from him. But more about that later. A bit further to the left is our medical office. Sally, Dr. Palin was fairly injured some time ago, so the office is closed for now. Straight ahead is Julia Darling, who feeds our poor and hungry stomachs, fueling our bodies to fight the cans. Our leaders, Trenton and Bate, are to the right from the entrance, in the war room. And at the uh, north turn, you go to the sleeping section, however you want to call it. Oh, the toilet is just opposite the medical office. That's important to know. Trust me. We can also keep a lantern just outside the door, because it's a bit too dark once you go in and to do your business. That's the basic layout. You'll find your way easily, I'm sure. So, why did you join? Why did you join the Fiend Drones? Uh, I can't remember the exact moment when it clicked in my head, but say, two, three years ago, I realized where the world was headed to. I learned more about the United Stations, under a protectorate. I didn't like it, any of it. I started hearing more and more bad stories about those tyrants, and some of them I had the misfortune of confirming with my own eyes. I got angry, really, really angry. Was I to allow these evil men, these tyrants, to oppress us? No, I was not! When I came here, I took a vow. I will fight to death to rid this world of Protectorate. To stop the metal boost from stomping all over us. And to kick some bloody cans out of Underrail for good. Yeah! For freedom! I haven't met these other people, so I don't think we need to talk about them. We'll, we'll talk to Hutch about them later. Alright, Hutch. Talk to you later. Stay cool. Stay free. I wish we had. I wish we could watch the arena in here. <laughs> You're distracting, honestly. The dog waggles its tail. Woof, woof. All right, Hutch. Sorry about this. I put points in it, though. I, I'm sure you understand. We don't want your bullets. We don't really want. I guess we'll take your 20 sticky coins. I'll do. First time giving them the Garrett greeting. Um, bear traps. Interesting. We don't want your bullets. Just want your sticky coins, sir. Good day. It'd be funny if at the end of the game there's like a million people outside Garrett's home, like, hey, we know it's you. <laughs> Demanding their 19,000 Charons back. Oh, look at all the cool people here. Hey, Beckett. The man removes his mask as soon as you come near him. He smiles after doing so, displaying an admiral's set of rotten teeth springing from a rectangular jaw covered with a several days old beard. His clothes are patchy in some and torn in other places. As for his words, they're carried by a rough-sounding but unmistakably friendly voice. Hey, you magnificent bastard. Welcome to the underpassages. Name's Harry Beckett. If it wasn't for me, all these derailed peeps would have been talking to the cans with nothing but rocks and a bit of hope. 
We sell all sorts of stuff. Good stuff. So feel free to spend some Charons. Hey, I was literally just talking about this. We do not have any mercantile, so we will not get to keep to look at the good stuff. We'll just have to take a look at what he's normally got. He buys grenades, foodstuffs, blueprints, and occasionally belts. Okay, so he's some miscellaneous stuff. But we don't need the Junkyard Surprise. We can vendor that to him. We have 42 bullets as well. We can just vendor those as well. And what is he vend? What is he selling? What the qual what's the quality in particular? Poison bolts, chemical tra trap cases, but we don't have biology. No, lower level boots. Uh, he's selling some advanced patching kits. We don't have very many of those, if any. Let's grab two of them. The stuff he's vendoring is all low. Oh, hold on. That dagger is decent. He might sell something that's good. 12 through 21. 14 through 23. My dagger is much higher level, though, than that one. No, the crossbows are better than the one that we made ourselves, which doesn't surprise me. All lower level stuff, unfortunately. Oh, but he's selling a crawler poison bolt. We'll grab one of those. And we'll grab both of these incendiaries as well. Yeah, that's a shame. So he's not going to vendor anything better, better for us. We'll still take this crap. So, Beckett, why did you join the free drones? You know... I used to be a United States supporter. Yeah, I know. I actually believed all that unification rubbish. It somehow made sense, you know. If all the states united, we'd be able to fight off raiders and beasts. Protectorate would, you guessed it, protect us. That's big stuff. Bigger than the Deep Caverns Echo. But unfortunately, that's not how things work in real life. I've seen the price of the safety they offer, of their protection. And I think it's too damn high. Protectorate will make us lie belly down in the mud and walk over us. And then tell us it's a good life. Bandits won't touch us, true, but that's a lot of mud to eat. To hell with it. I don't want that. So I hooked up with my old acquaintance, Mura, and came here. The peeps need supplies, and that's what I do best. Uh, tell me a little bit about Bait. Bait is a different type of leader than Trenton is. While Trenton is straight to the point strategic mastermind, Alvin Bait has that common man leader sort of thing. Uh, what I really mean is he behaves like he was one of us. Us regular peeps. <laughs> that bastard. I'm not saying Trent isn't, but he keeps to himself. Bates, on the other hand, will brief us about serious issues, then get wasted with us later. And that bastard can drink two burrows worth of mushroom brew, at least. <laughs> Alright, take care, Beckett. Stay vi vicious, Garrett. You better believe it. Viciously searching your pockets for lint. You can attack it. All three pieces of lint you had. Death to the Protectorate. I like that all these people have names, you know? That's actually interesting. You're not just named Protectorate Guard or something. Oh, no, you left! You left. Hello. Osmazios. We'll take your MK2 lockpick, and we'll take the working shot from you. For freedom. And freedom comes at a price. Garrett's, Garrett demands his taxes be paid. The cans shouldn't find us here, but we still keep our eyes open at all times. All it takes is one spy in this place to give everyone away. United Stations? Pfft. Pure lies. Yep. Searching the pockets. A very low-level dagger. A burrower burger. That's a constitution. We'll grab six sticking coins. And we'll eat... Sandwich. Rocksteady, is Bebop here? Nah, Rocksteady just shred. Protectorate, they make me sick. I'm so sorry, Rocksteady. You have an awesome name. It's a cool nickname. Battery throwing dagger. We'll take the coins. We must all stick together. I agree. And nothing, and, you know, that, well. As a, as a, as a sub token of goodwill, we'll take your burrower trap as well. I wonder 
why she's patrolling. I'm suspicious of her. Yeah, and her red goggles. Lashonda. Two EMP mines. Wow. Can't take them, though. Her suspicion level's too high. I thought about increasing our secondary skills, lockpicking and what have you. But that would mean falling off the combat. And we really can't afford to do that. We're already sacrificing a good deal of combat in order to um, grab some crafting. Garrett, always a pleasure. Cool. Sorry, sir. I, I got pickpocketing as a skill. I'm sure you understand. TT-3000. An old world 762 millimeter handgun. 3,000 bucks. You can keep it. I don't need that. Even though it's worth more money than sticking coins, we'll take the coins instead. Izumi. Two bucks. One day, Fort Apogee will burn. Brother. I don't think we need the bolts that badly. We have 300 something left in our, whatchamacallit. Okay, uh, anyone here? This looks like some sort of old supply place. This supposed to be the leaders. Ah, yep. Garrett, I've just had some missing fighters return to base. They informed me they were captured by the lurkers, but you managed to rescue the ball. Outstanding work. Bait was in charge of asking for volunteers, but who needs those when we have you? I've arranged with Beckett to give you a reward. Go see him. He has it ready. Oh, hey! Yeah, that's right. We eliminated practically all the lurkers. All of them. All of them. So it should be much safer for the free drones to operate down here. Oh, before I do, what can you tell me about the free drones? The free drones are an anarchist... Are an... Uh, wow, it's funny I can't pronounce it anymore. Anarchist movement founded by Wallace Steele Chokoslovetsky some 12 years ago. The term anarchy is often misinterpreted because it is so often associated with chaos and senseless violence. In truth, anarchist philosophy simply advocates that the people should be governed only by themselves and not by a different, often corrupted, and oppressive entity. Of course, because of the tyrannical and brutal nature of the underworld protectorate, violence is necessary if you want to remain free. That's how propaganda against us actually works, especially here in the South. The cans claim that we are just another group of bandits comparable to the likes of the Ironheads and fabricate and spread our supposed acts of terror and chaos. It's pro-propaganda, Garrett, but the real truth is on our side. God bless it, Trenton. I like that attitude. What can you tell me about the Protectorate? The atrocities committed by the filthy, militaristic, unreal Protectorate are simply too numerous, but I believe the most effective example would be the one that shaped Underrail the most. The demise of Biocorp. Some 15 years ago, the Super Corporation had already been weakened from the inside and was no match for the growing power of the Protectorate. Biocorp ceased to exist, being swallowed by the Protectorate, leaving no one to compete for power over North Underrail. General Melek, the founder of the Protectorate, disbanded the Great Council, and when I say disbanded, I mean bribed, threatened, and assassinated its members. A small group of remaining Biocorp loyalists attempted the coup, but were quickly apprehended and executed together with another bunch of influential people who could have been potentially dangerous. No one dared stand in Melek's way after that, but to further brainwash the citizens and hide the apparent autocracy, he formed the United Stations, led by the Council of Five. Melek is in charge, of course, but this way it gives off a democratic feel, which is all bogus, naturally. Of course, not everyone is dumb to the core, so the free drones materialize into existence soon after that. Still, our fight is far from over for the fabrications perpetrated by the cans have great influence to this day. Flashy lies attract human herds the most. I agree with that. What can you tell me about bait? Albert is a good leader, and while we run the cell together at the moment, I believe that even if something was to happen to me, he'd be able to command the base on his own without problems. He is one intelligent and capable man. At the same time, while he has a strong sense of humor and knows how to approach and socialize with people, he can forget himself at times. He just... He overdoes it from time to time, for lack of a better term. So long, and stay free, Trenton. You see two men standing next to a table full of differently colored maps. Some printed, some drawn by hand. A true strategic collage. One of the two men notices you enter and addresses you. Hello, Garrett, and welcome to the base. 
My name is Corbin Trenton, and we just talked for like 10 minutes. The gentleman next to me is Alvin Bate. We are currently in charge of South London Rail Free Drone Cell. We don't have much to offer in terms of comfort, as you can see for yourself. But don't worry, once we win this bloody war, we will not be hiding in under passages anymore. It's a... Uh, hmm, I'm telling you to ask if there's more. You mean, there's more free drones out there? Indeed. What you see here is just a small part of a much bigger picture. We are not as strong in the south as we are in North Underrail, but we're working on it. That's where young people like you come in, kiddo. We need all the help we can get if we're going to confront the Protectorate. Before I forget, you should see Beckett, our supplier, and tell him I sent you. All newcomers get to choose their gear when they first arrive. You do that on your way out because we got a little errand for you. Alvin, you or me? I'll do it. All right, kiddo, it's story time. A long time ago in Junkyard. Alvin, please. Okay, okay. <clears throat> Ever since the Protectorate came to Junkyard and established the United Station's embassy, we had to form a small group of capable agents who will A. Keep an eye on whatever the cans are doing, B. Try to counter the Protectorate brainwashing as much as possible, and various other tasks. They, the agents, are dug in a small hideout in the poor, poorer section of Junkyard, and have operated without a hitch for quite some time. Your mission is simple. Go to Junkyard, find the hideout. I'll explain how to get there in a moment, and then talk to Sarah. You've met her before. She's the woman who sent you here, and is in charge of the whole Junkyard operation. She'll give you some surveillance equipment. They recovered, which needs to be brought here. Hutch is already on his way there. You might need a hampley hand with carrying all that stuff. You'll draw less attention if you go one by one. What sort of equipment are we talking about? Unstable explosives. <laughs> Just kidding, kiddo. It's a light -like communications equipment that will come in handy to us. Protectorate approved. Alright, tell me how to get there. You've already met with Sarah in Junkyard, so you know how to reach it. Once you're in Junkyard, find Kareem's bar. There's a small alley just north of it, and once there, take the first door on the left. Knock four times, slowly, and they'll let you in. I'm on my way. Good. Take the equipment to Beckett once you're back. It might seem a little dull thing to do, whole equipment that is, but someone's got to do it. Usually this is done by Moria, but she can't show her face in Junkyard anymore unless she wants to end up behind bars again. You understand. Take care, and stay free. Trenton nods. So long, and stay free, guys. Right, we have a little time left. We might as well talk to Beckett again. Hello, sir. You vicious bastard! I heard what you did to those bleeding lurkers. Stood right in their turf and busted our, pal our pals out. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm cool. <laughs> and I know it. But please don't stop. No, we'll, uh, we'll be a little more modest. Uh, thank you. But it wasn't exactly like that. Uh, don't be so humble, you silly bastard. Brag. Brag until everyone gives you the look. You have an energy shield just for you. Hey, good deeds should come unrewarded. So I hope you like it. He gives you an energy shield emitter. Trent told me to see you about some gear. Yep. I've been told you'd come first. At the moment, I could offer you some armor, some weapons, or if you're the side kind of guy. I got some of that too. I'm interested in armor. I have metal armor, leather armor, right armor, tactical vests. A suit of leather armor. Here you go. Gives you a full suit of leather armor. Alright, ma'am. Take care. It's probably lower level. Oh my god. It's utter garbage. The shield isn't terrible, but we have a better one equipped, having killed Baylor for it. So, this is telling me that the, we should have done the free drones arguably first? Oh, hello. What is this? Protectorate can. A derogatory caricature of Protectorate soldier, often referred to as a can. Made out of an actual tin can. Inside, you can find anti-Protectorate propaganda detailing alleged atrocities that the Protectorate has committed in North Underrail, and calling upon the people of the South to refuse to cooperate with them, and actively resist them whenever possible. We don't need the armor they gave, they gave us. We will totally hold on that shield, though. That's worth 7,000 bucks. Uh, we actually, I guess we have a little more of this place to, to uncover. Fort Apogee will one day burn. Yes, it will. First, we'll pick the pockets of the people here. <sighs> actually, when I begin to yawn. So I think we'll call the session here, and when we come back, we'll explore the rest of the Free Drones base, and then we'll see about moving some equipment for them. I will see you guys next episode, I hope. Thank you guys for watching, and take care, everyone.